As the night falls and the darkness creeps in, the world around us changes. Shadows seem to grow longer and the silence becomes deafening. But what happens when the silence is broken by the sound of footsteps that don't belong to anyone you know? What happens when you hear a whisper in your ear but there's no one there? Welcome to our world of horror, where the unknown is the only certainty and fear is the only emotion. Brace yourself because the journey we're about to take is not for the faint of heart. The abandoned movie studio stood in the outskirts of the town, with its rusted gates creaking in the wind. Once a thriving hub of creativity and entertainment, it now lay in ruins, with broken windows and peeling paint. The boys had heard rumors about the place from the older kids in school, but they had never dared to venture inside. That is, until today. The sun was shining bright, and the birds were chirping merrily in the trees. School was in session, but the boys had other plans. They had decided to ditch school and explore the abandoned studio, hoping to find some hidden treasures or forgotten artifacts. They had brought with them a bag full of snacks, a flashlight, and a camera to capture any interesting findings. As they approached the gate, they could feel a strange sense of excitement mixed with fear. The gates were locked, but it was easy for the boys to climb over them. Once inside, they were struck by the eerie silence that hung in the air. The sound of their footsteps echoed through the empty halls, and the smell of dust and decay filled their noses. The studio was huge, with multiple sound stages, editing rooms, and equipment rooms. The boys felt like they were in a different world, surrounded by the remnants of a forgotten time. They saw old film reels, faded posters, and broken camera equipment strewn across the rooms. It was like a time capsule of a bygone era, and they were the lucky ones to have discovered it. But as they delved deeper into the studio, they began to feel that they were not alone. They heard strange noises, like footsteps and whispers, that seemed to be coming from the shadows. The boys tried to brush it off as their imagination, but the feeling of being watched persisted. Suddenly, they heard a loud creaking sound, and a door at the end of the hallway opened. A figure appeared in the doorway, his face covered by a hood. The boys froze, unsure of what to do. The figure approached them slowly, and they could see that he was holding something in his hand. It was a knife. The boys screamed and ran in the opposite direction, but the figure was hot on their heels. They could hear his heavy breathing and the sound of his footsteps getting closer and closer. They knew that they had to find a place to hide, or else they would be caught. Finally, they found a storage room and shut the door behind them. They could hear the maniac's footsteps outside, and they held their breath, waiting for him to leave. After what seemed like hours, the footsteps faded away, and the boys cautiously opened the door. The studio was now completely silent, and the boys knew that they had to get out of there as fast as they could. They ran back to the gate, climbed over it, and ran all the way back to their homes. Little did they know that their innocent exploration had awoken a maniac, who would soon unleash terror on their families and the town. The abandoned studio was not a place for curious kids, it was a place of horror and secrets that should have remained hidden forever. The boys had never intended to cause any harm when they decided to ditch school and explore the abandoned movie studio. They had only wanted to have a bit of fun to feel the excitement of adventure and exploration that they had seen in their favorite movies. They had never expected to awaken a maniac who would soon terrorize their families and the town. When the boys returned home from their adventure, they tried to forget about what had happened. They laughed and joked about their narrow escape, and they bragged to their friends about their bravery. But deep down, they knew that something was not right. They could feel a sense of unease and dread, 
like a dark cloud hanging over their heads. The next day, strange things started to happen. The boys' families began to receive threatening letters and phone calls, warning them to stay away from the abandoned studio. The letters were written in a scrawled handwriting, and they were filled with threats and curses. The phone calls were silent, but the boys' parents could hear breathing on the other end of the line. At first, the families dismissed the letters and calls as a prank, but as the days went by, they became more and more frequent and more and more sinister. The boys' parents began to worry, and they contacted the police, who promised to investigate. But the police could find no evidence of who was behind the threats. They searched the abandoned studio, but they found nothing but dust and cobwebs. They questioned the boys, but they could not provide any useful information. It seemed like the threats were coming from nowhere, like a ghost haunting the town. The boys were terrified, and they could not sleep at night. They felt like they were being watched all the time, like someone was lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. They started to regret their decision to explore the abandoned studio, and they wished that they could turn back time. But it was too late. The maniac had been awoken, and he was determined to get revenge on those who had disturbed his slumber. He had been living in the abandoned studio for years, hiding in the shadows, waiting for someone to come along. When the boys had entered his domain, he had seen it as a sign that it was time to strike. The maniac was a recluse, a loner who had been rejected by society. He had become obsessed with the movie studio, with its history and its secrets. He had spent years studying its every nook and cranny, learning its layout and its weaknesses. And now, he was ready to use that knowledge to his advantage. The boys had unwittingly unleashed a monster, and there was no turning back. The maniac was on the loose, and he was coming for them. They had made an innocent mistake, but they would soon pay the price for it. The boys' families continued to receive threatening letters and phone calls from the maniac, but they still had no idea who he was or how to stop him. They had all started to live in fear, afraid of what might happen next. But they never expected the maniac to strike so soon. It was a warm summer evening, and the boys' families had gathered for a barbecue in the backyard of one of their houses. They were all chatting and laughing, trying to forget about the threats that had been plaguing them. The boys had been playing basketball in the driveway, but they had come inside to get some drinks. As they walked through the house, they noticed that something was off. There was a strange smell in the air, like burnt hair and gasoline. They looked around, trying to figure out where the smell was coming from, when suddenly, they heard a loud crash from the backyard. They ran to the back door and saw a sight that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. The backyard was on fire, with flames reaching high into the sky. The barbecue grill had exploded, sending hot coals and burning debris everywhere. And in the middle of the chaos stood the maniac, his face twisted in a grotesque grin. The boys' families were screaming and running in every direction, trying to escape the flames. But the maniac was blocking their path, brandishing a gasoline can and a lighter. He was laughing maniacally, enjoying the chaos and destruction that he had caused. The boys knew that they had to act fast if they were going to save their families. They ran to the garage and grabbed the fire extinguishers, hoping that they could put out the flames before it was too late. They fought their way through the smoke and flames, spraying the extinguishers at the burning debris. But the maniac was not going to let them win so easily. He had a twisted determination to destroy everything and everyone who had crossed his path. He picked up a nearby garden hose and began spraying the boys with water, trying to douse the flames and drown them at the same time. The boys were caught in a deadly game of cat and mouse, dodging the maniac's attacks and trying to put out the flames at the same time. 
They were covered in soot and sweat, their clothes singed and torn. But they refused to give up, knowing that their families were counting on them. Finally, after what felt like hours, the boys managed to put out the flames and subdue the maniac. They had saved their families, but at a great cost. The backyard was destroyed, and their homes were damaged. But the worst damage was to their spirits, as they realized that the maniac was still out there, waiting to strike again. The maniac was taken into custody by the police, but he remained silent and unrepentant. He seemed to revel in his notoriety, basking in the attention that he was getting from the media. The boys and their families were left to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives, knowing that they would never be able to forget the horror that they had experienced. The maniac's attack had been brutal and unexpected, but it was only the beginning. The town was about to be plunged into a nightmare that would shake it to its very core. The maniac had a plan, a plan that would unleash chaos and destruction on an unprecedented scale and the boys and their families were caught in the middle of it. After the maniac's attack on their backyard, the boys and their families were even more determined to stop him before he could hurt anyone else. They knew that the police were doing their best to catch the maniac, but they also knew that they couldn't rely on the authorities alone. The boys decided to take matters into their own hands and go on a hunt for clues. They were convinced that if they could figure out who the maniac was, they could stop him before he caused any more damage. They gathered in one of the boys' houses and started brainstorming. They knew that the maniac had some kind of connection to the abandoned movie studio, but they didn't know what it was. They decided to start there, hoping that they could find something that would lead them to the maniac. The boys snuck out of their houses late at night and made their way to the movie studio. They had never been inside before, and they were a little nervous about what they might find. The studio was dark and silent, with shadows looming in every corner. They searched the main building first, looking for any kind of clue that might help them. They found nothing but dust and cobwebs, the only sound their own footsteps echoing off the walls. They were about to give up when one of the boys noticed something strange about the floorboards. There was a loose board in the floor, with a small gap between it and the one next to it. The boys pried it open and found a small box hidden underneath. Inside the box, they found a collection of old photographs and newspaper clippings. The photographs were all of a man in his mid-thirties, with a cruel smirk on his face. He was posing with different groups of people, sometimes holding a bottle of alcohol or a cigarette. The boys recognized him immediately as one of the workers at the movie studio, a man who had been fired a few years ago for causing trouble on set. The newspaper clippings were all about the man's subsequent run-ins with the law. He had been arrested several times for petty theft and assault, but he had always managed to avoid serious jail time. The boys realized that this man was their maniac, the one who had been terrorizing their families. They carefully put the box back where they had found it, hoping that no one would notice that it had been disturbed. They knew that they had to go to the police with the information they had found, but they also knew that they couldn't risk the maniac finding out that they were onto him. The boys snuck back into their houses and went to bed their heads full of plans and possibilities. They knew that they were getting closer to stopping the maniac, but they also knew that they were in more danger than ever before. The maniac had shown that he was willing to do anything to get what he wanted, and the boys and their families were standing in his way. The boys knew that they had to act quickly to stop the maniac before he could hurt anyone else. They decided to go to the police with the information they had found, but they also knew that they needed to be careful. They didn't want the maniac to find out that they were onto him. The boys came up with a plan. They would go to the police station together and tell the officers everything they knew about the maniac. They would also ask for protection for their families, 
just in case the maniac found out that they had been talking to the police. The boys set out early in the morning, determined to put an end to the maniac's reign of terror. They walked to the police station, their hearts pounding in their chests. When they arrived, they were greeted by a group of officers who listened to their story with interest. The officers took the information the boys had found seriously and promised to do everything in their power to catch the maniac. They also promised to provide protection for the boys' families. As the boys left the police station, they felt a sense of relief wash over them. They had done their part, and now it was up to the police to catch the maniac. However, as they made their way back home, they couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. They turned a corner and saw the maniac standing in front of them, his eyes fixed on them. The boys froze, their hearts pounding in their chests. The maniac took a step forward, and the boys knew that they had to act fast. One of the boys picked up a rock and threw it at the maniac, hitting him in the shoulder. The maniac screamed in pain and lunged at the boys. They scattered, running in different directions. The maniac chased after them, his footsteps pounding on the pavement. The boys knew that they had to find a place to hide, or they would be caught. They turned into an alley and saw a door leading into a small storage shed. The boys opened the door and ran inside, locking it behind them. They huddled together in the darkness, their hearts racing. They could hear the maniac pounding on the door, trying to get in. Suddenly, they heard sirens in the distance. The police had arrived. The maniac heard them too and took off running in the opposite direction. The boys breathed a sigh of relief as they emerged from the shed. The police officers were waiting for them, and they took them home safely. The maniac was eventually caught and taken into custody. The families in the neighborhood could finally sleep soundly at night, knowing that they were safe from harm. The boys had been through a terrifying experience, but they had also learned the importance of standing up for what is right and the strength of working together. They would always remember the lessons they had learned during their adventure at the abandoned movie studio. The maniac was finally caught and taken into custody but the families in the neighborhood still felt the effects of his terror. The parents of the three boys were particularly affected, as they had been through the most traumatic experience. The families struggled to come to terms with what had happened. They were grateful that their children were safe, but they couldn't shake the feeling of fear that had taken hold of them. They began to lock their doors and windows at all times and installed security cameras around their homes. The three boys were also deeply affected by what they had experienced. They had nightmares and flashbacks, and they found it difficult to concentrate in school. They were also worried about the possibility of the maniac seeking revenge on them or their families. The boys' parents sought counseling for them and they slowly began to heal from their trauma. The boys talked about what had happened, and they came to the realization that they had made a mistake by exploring the abandoned movie studio. They learned the importance of listening to their parents and staying out of dangerous situations. The boys also became closer as friends. They had gone through a frightening experience together, and it had brought them closer than ever before. They made a promise to always be there for each other and to never put themselves in danger again. The community also came together to support each other. They held a meeting where they discussed the importance of neighborhood watch and how to stay safe in their community. They formed a group that patrolled the streets at night, looking out for any suspicious activity. The police also increased their presence in the neighborhood making sure that everyone felt safe. They patrolled the streets regularly and made a point of checking in with the families who had been affected by the maniac's terror. Slowly but surely, life returned to normal in the neighborhood. The families began to relax and feel safe again, 
and the boys returned to school with a newfound appreciation for the importance of safety and listening to authority. The experience had taught them all a valuable lesson about the importance of being vigilant and looking out for each other. It had also brought them closer as a community, and they vowed to always stand together in times of need. As for the abandoned movie studio, it remained empty and deserted. No one dared to venture inside, and it became a symbol of the danger that lurked in the shadows. The families in the neighborhood made a point of avoiding the area, and it became a silent reminder of the terror that they had all faced together. In the end, the experience had taught everyone involved a valuable lesson about the importance of safety and community. They had come through a frightening ordeal, but they had emerged stronger and more united than ever before.